This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Noah Creighton. And I am Niyama Ama. It's one of the busiest times of year here on Texas Tech campus. The semester is in full swing and many departments and groups are trying to fit in events before the beginning of spring break. This week has been no exception, with more than a dozen options open to the Texas Tech community, including one day-long event specifically designed for a special group of Red Raiders. On Tuesday, Tech's first generation transition and mentoring programs hosted the annual First Gen Student Summit in the sub. The event ran from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. and included several sessions designed to celebrate first generation in college students. The session gave the attendees the chance to create community, talk about their experience, and learn skills to help them in college. Unlike most FGTMP events, high school students planning to attend college were invited to join Tech students during the First Gen Summit. Along with the various sessions, attendees were served lunch, posted, in a group photo and had a chance to stay for a student faculty and staff mixer at the end of the day. FGTMP hosts the first gen student summit each spring here on campus. If you would like more information on resources and future events offered through Tech's first generation transition and mentoring programs, visit diversity.ttu.edu slash FGTMP. There's no shortage of art here on the Texas Tech campus. Along with the permanent installations, there are also many galleries and exhibit spaces showcasing work for members of the tech community, along with artists from around the world. One place where you can find rotating displays is at the National Ranching and Heritage Center, located on the north side of campus. Last week, the NRHC featured an opening for a new exhibit titled King Ranch, Legacy and Art. The exhibit features paintings by Noe Perez, a contemporary artist from Corpus Christi. Perez's paintings focus on King Ranch, one of the largest and most historic ranches in the world. The artwork captures the landscapes, people, and day-to-day -day life on the ranch over its 170 years of existence. Bill Reeves called me and said, uh, so what did you think about that idea? I said, man, that would be a fantastic idea, but..." I don't know that anybody's going to want to see my. He said, no, no, we want to see your paintings. And I said, I would love to do that. So he went to work, got a proposal together, got it in front of the board of King Ranch. And many months later, we, were, we had a contract and I was painting away. The exhibit officially opened last Friday with a short program, a meet and greet and a book signing with Perez. King Ranch Legacy and Art will be on display at the National Ranching and Heritage Center until May 24. Black History Month officially came to a close on Tuesday. Throughout February, the Texas Tech campus hosted dozens of events to recognize the importance of black Americans here at Texas Tech and beyond. Last Thursday, the TTU Libraries hosted one of their final events of the month with a special discussion and meet and greet at the Black Cultural Center. Dr. Rob Weiner joined a group of faculty, staff, and students to talk about the new exhibit in the Peters Family Legacy Library called Black Heroes in Comics, 1930s to 2022. The exhibit was expanded to include black comic creators who have had an impact on the industry over the last century. Weiner's discussion focused on those creators to bring awareness to their influence on the comic industry. With anything, there's a hidden history behind it. And so it's my job as a librarian and cultural historian to help make aware some of that history that's behind the scenes that people don't always know about. Along with last week's discussion, attendees also had art access to art supplies to create their own zine, which is a form of informal artistic expression. The Black Heroes in the Comics exhibit is currently on display in the Peters Library at the Black Cultural Center. The library features a collection of materials that showcase black writing that is available to the campus community. The library is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturday from noon to 5 p.m. Comics and paintings wearing the only form of artistic expression recently on display here at Texas Tech. A unique group of musicians also came together to showcase their skills and backstory to the community. 
The Elegant Savages Orchestra took the stage on Sunday, February 19, at the School of Music's Hemley Recital Hall. Each year, the orchestra uses a historic time period to create a theme for the group. This year's group is the 1942 Casablanca Band, and each member dresses up in period clothing and develops a backstory for their character in the orchestra. The group is mostly composed of music majors, but any student is invited to join during an opening audition in the fall. If you can tap a drum, you can play it. If you can, anything that you can do with your hands and feet to keep and keep a steady beat, you can do it here. We're very uh, encouraged to experiment and to be creative. The spring performance was the second and final concert on campus this school year. The group also performed this past weekend at LabocCon at the Labock Memorial Civic Center. The Whitaker College of Engineering plays an important role in the STEM education here on the Texas Tech campus. But last month, several student groups headed off campus to encourage some local kids to explore opportunities in the field of science, technology, engineering, and math. On Saturday, February 18th, Lubbock Science Spectrum was host to the College of Engineering's Community Engineering Fair. Student groups set up tables and showcase robots, a race car, and science experiments. Attendees could also get involved as they molded a boat out of foil, pieced together a robot hand, or even looked in a racing car simulator. Alana Baliga, the education coordinator for the Science Spectrum, says the event had a great opportunity to collaborate with the College of Engineering and offer a special event to the local community. And it's a really exciting time to be able to see Texas Tech students, specifically within engineering, come and kind of showcase some of their um, projects, their research, and also provide a hands-on component for students. The Community Engineering Fair ran from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., with hundreds of local students stopping by to learn about STEM and enjoy some fun. The College of Engineering holds several similar events throughout the year to help grow STEM education here in Lubbock. Last weekend, the South Plains area was hit with some of the strongest winds the area has seen in years. That created a dust storm that blacked out the sky and created travel issues throughout the area. The wind has continued to be a factor this week, but luckily we haven't seen a repeat of the 70 mile per hour wind gusts that were recorded on Sunday afternoon. But gusty winds will soon be back in the forecast as more changes are headed our way this evening. Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. The MCTV tower cam is currently showing a few clouds and blue skies. Unfortunately, the sky may also include a brown tint as winds are predicted to increase late this afternoon. Wind speeds are expected to increase to 20 to 30 miles per hour as a cold front moves into the area. Wind gusts could also climb as high as 40 miles per hour. Temperatures will also drop quickly after the sun sets. Tonight, the front won't just bring cooler temperatures, there's also a slight chance of rain before midnight. The windy conditions will also continue into the night, but that will lead to clear skies and temperatures dropping into the low 30s. Tomorrow, the skies will remain clear and temperatures will rebound into the upper 60s. This evening, a chance that highs could creep into the low 70s before sunset. The winds will also be much lighter, making for a nice mild afternoon. Heading into the weekend, Saturday will be a near repeat of Friday's conditions, with highs currently forecast in the upper 60s. On Sunday, conditions could be very nice to start the day, but by early afternoon, wind speeds will increase to 20 to 30 miles per hour. It shouldn't be as bad as this week's gusty conditions, but there's still a slight chance of a dust storm late in the day. Luckily, by nightfall, the winds will decrease and temperatures will stay above freezing. Looking ahead, less winds and more clouds are in the forecast next week, but that also means that an increase in chance for rain and possibly even snow before the weekend. During the month of February, MCTV followed the trial of Hollis Daniels III, a former Texas Tech student who shot and killed a TTU police officer in the fall of 2017. The three weeks' testimony and deliberations of the trial finally came to an end last week. 
On Friday night, Hollis Daniels was sentenced to life without parole for the murder of Officer Floyd East Jr. Jurors returned to the courtroom after two days of intense deliberations to deliver the verdict. On the first day of the trial, on February 6th, Daniels pled guilty, which meant that the jury only focused on the penalty case of the trial. The state was pushing for the death penalty, but the defense argued that depression and drug abuse influenced Daniels' actions and that death was not warranted. Ultimately, the jury sided with the defense, and Daniels will live out the rest of his days in prison. Friday's verdict came over five years after the shooting in October of 2017. After the trial ended, Officer East's widow, Carmen East, addressed the media and offered her condolences to the Daniels family. She also encouraged the students at Texas Tech University and beyond who may have had thoughts of suicide to reach out and utilize resources available to them to avoid similar tragedies as what happened to her husband. Texas Tech Athletics has been on a roll as several spring sports have started off their seasons with winning streaks. But one Red Raider team is once again on out the outside looking in as their hopes for a chance to the postseason continue to fade. MCTV's Alejandra Salazar joins us now with a look at the latest Texas Tech headlines in sports. Alejandra? Thanks, Noah and nee. The Texas Tech men's basketball team traveled to Lawrence, Kansas to take on the number three Kansas Jayhawks. Although the Red Raiders did battle it out to the end, they came up short in the final minute of the game. The Red Raiders finished the game going 10 for 14 at the free throw line, including Pop Isaacs going 6 for 6. And with 15 seconds left to play, Isaacs drove down to the basket for a layup, but had his shot blocked while former Red Raider Kevin McCuller would grab the rebound and push the ball up, finding Dewan Harris under the basket for an easy shot, making the score 65 to 60. With four seconds remaining, Davion Harmon would make a three-pointer to close the gap, but a pair of free throws would help secure the win for the Jayhawks, making the final score 67-63 to and guaranteeing Kansas at least a share of the regular season conference title. Now coming up for Texas Tech, they'll conclude their regular season against Oklahoma State at 5 p.m. this Saturday at the USA before they head to the Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship. The seeding and bracket will be determined on Saturday night following results from throughout the conference. The tournament will be next week at the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City, Missouri. And on a brighter note, baseball season is back and the Texas Tech baseball team just closed out a perfect 10-game homestand after getting the midweek sweep against Air Force Academy. To open the series up, we saw five different arms from the bullpen hit the mound and they all played an important role of getting the Tuesday night win. After a solo home run and back-to-back -back singles in the sixth inning by the Air Force, the ball was turned over to Brandon Beckel with two runners on base and zero outs. He was quick to get work done and close the door on any rally the Falcons were trying to get going. With one out left, Beckel would face the strong left-handed hitter Jake Thomason, who leads their ball club in RBIs, but with another full count pitch, Beckel's fastball would strike him out, looking to end the top of the seventh inning, stranding two. Coach Tadlock mentioned how they really picked each other up when they needed it throughout the game. We've always said, I mean, baseball, it's, it's about picking each other up and I think the whole group picked up Bo Blessed. I mean, I think they all care for him, and they're all friends, and they hate it for him. But, um, you know, the, the whole team really did, for, for that matter. In Game 2, the Red Raiders took control of the game early, leading 8-1 to one after two innings. Tech had three home runs over the course of four at-bats in the second inning, where Kevin Basil knocked his second of the season, while Drew Woodcox and Gavin Cash went back-to-back. -back. It was the first pair of back-to-back -back home runs since Kurt Wilson and Owen Washburn did at Kansas last season in the third inning. The team finished out the game, defeating the Falcons 18-5 to improve to to a 10-0 perfect so far this season. Today, the baseball team will be traveling to Minute Maid Park in Houston to compete in the Shriners Children's College Classic. They will play Rice University tomorrow at 11 a.m. and you can watch on Astros.com. For more details on the tournament schedule this weekend, check out TexasTech.com. Now switching gears from the turf to the court, the Lady Raiders basketball team took on TCU last night at the USA, closing out the regular season home finale.
Guard Briamber Scott led the way yet again for the Lady Raiders, scoring 18 points and grabbing six rebounds. Katie Farrell also had herself a night, reaching a rebounding milestone as she pulled in her 800th career rebound to remain the only active D1 player with 600 points, 800 rebounds, 500 assists, and 100 blocked shots. The ladies came out on top with a 66-49 to win against the Horned Frogs. Up next for the Red Raiders, they'll be facing Iowa State on the road this Saturday at 3 p.m. Coverage will be available on ESPN+. And tonight, after 17 games on the road, the softball team will open up its home slate versus North Dakota at 5 p.m. in the Janine McKinney Memorial Classic, where all five games for the Red Raiders will be aired on ESPN+. First year head coach Craig Snyder will be making his debut in front of Red Raider Nation, where his 2023 team has already set the program record in single game home runs and ranking inside the top 10 nationally in doubles and home runs. The full tournament schedule will be available on texastech.com. That's all for sports. Back to you, Nee. Thanks, Alejandra. Uh, well, as we mentioned earlier, the university schedule has been packed over the last few weeks, and that could leave some Red Raiders hungry after running all over campus. Luckily, one student group offered an option for some late night grub that benefited a good cause. Raiders Helping Others hosted Pancake Nights last Monday and Thursday evening. The group set up griddles flipped some hot cakes and served them up to hungry students for a dollar apiece. Raiders Helping Others is a service organization here on campus who offers opportunities for students to help out people in the local community and beyond the city limits. Last week's Pancake Nights helped fund alternative programs that will take place during spring break. We're going to be going to different cities outside of Lubbock and volunteering for the week of spring break um, and doing different acts of service like um, helping home in homeless shelters, helping in food banks, stuff like that. Um, we're a volunteer organization, so we do this all year during uh, the whole year of all around Lubbock. Um, and we have volunteer events every single month through our organization. Last week's Pancake Nights were held in the Wallgate Lobby on Monday and Chitwood Weymouth Lobby on Thursday. RHO hold similar funding race, fundraising events throughout the school year, giving members a chance to make a difference and help those in need. For more information on how to get involved, search for TTU RHO on Facebook or RHO underscore TTU on Instagram. So, Nee, did you have a chance to check out any of these campus events? Unfortunately not. I had a lot of homework, but maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, I actually was able to go to Lubbock Con, so oh. seeing that whole thing play out was honestly super wow. awesome. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all for the today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check out ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.